Tonight presents ET Vault Unlocked. Tom Hanks. Entertainment Tonight has been uh, been part of uh, the American household for more than 30 years. Well, it's been 43 years to be exact, and we've been with Tom for all of them. You should have seen me in some younger days. <laughs> when we first met the young actor on the set of his breakout TV role. It's been said of you that you actually have great comedy timing. Is this true? Yes. And his transformation to two-time Oscar winner. You really do kind of just think, how did I get here? E.T.'s never before seen interviews with the nicest guy in Hollywood. Now I know why me, because I work so damn hard, that's why. Get ready for E.T. Vault Unlocked Tom Hanks. <laughs> this is the Bible of show business. <laughs> 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 Tom's films, iconic, his movie lines, legendary, and clearly the man <laughs> has good taste in entertainment shows. Welcome to E.T. Our vault would not be complete without no. Tom, so we are tipping our hat to the star dubbed the nicest guy in Hollywood. Hello. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Thank you, you Tom. People really, 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 really like you, Tom Hanks. They really, 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 really like you. Mr. Tom Hanks. Oh! This is all kind of a, a fluke in a lot of ways that, that uh, have turned into something that uh, I'm really proud of and work real hard to, to attain and, and sustain. I still feel as though I can't believe they're giving me this job. Humble, genuine, and somehow still relatable, E.T.'s been with Tom for five decades of his legendary career. I was a kid growing up, and they said, someday you're going to be on E.T. I said, like, well, maybe once. Despite two consecutive Oscars, plus four nods, five Golden Globes, seven Emmys, and an estimated net worth of $400 million. I'm just a, I'm an average Joe. But Tom's filmography is anything but average. He's raked in over $10 billion at the global box office, and he's behind some of the most iconic movie lines of our time. Life was like a box of chocolates. There's no crying in baseball! Wilson! Wilson! You do have to get used to, to people telling you that you're the greatest thing since sliced cheese because you know that you're still only sliced cheese, you know? <laughs> so it's, uh, you can't believe what anybody says. You always have to come back to that same truth, am I doing the right thing? Before he made it big in showbiz, Tom was just a kid growing up in the Bay Area of California in Concord, just outside Oakland. How old were you when, you, when your folks broke up? Five, I was five. I grew up I grew up with my dad and I saw my mom all the time. There was one time when my brother and my father and I shared the same bedroom. But uh, dad had the top bunk and my brother had the, the bottom bunk and I, I had my own bed. And we've never thought that we came from a particularly broken home. We thought we came from a very exciting home as a matter of fact. Uh, my, my dad always uh, gave us as as much credibility and leeway as we wanted because we always found our own way. He, if, if we were happy, we weren't getting into any trouble and you know we enjoyed what we were doing, uh, he, he thought we were doing great. When Tom was a teen, he did what most teens do. He worked summer jobs while he finished school. Uh, I was a vendor at Oakland AIDS game. Oh, really? Yeah, I was 14 years old. Uh, first of all, I got robbed twice. Oh, so great. <laughs> the first job that I actually really loved was uh, I was a bellman. I got to wear a suit and I got to meet a lot of famous people. Uh, Sydney Poitier, I drove to the airport. I carried Cher's bags when she was married to Greg Allman. Bill Lean On Me Withers, Billie Jean King. I, I actually delivered bags to Chrissy Everett's room when she was in the shower. She had to come out of the shower to open the door. And did she have on a towel? She had on a towel. <laughs> After studying theater in college, he landed his first acting job, which whisked him all the way from California to Cleveland. Cleveland? Why Cleveland? First time I got union scale to be an actor, that was an amazing thing. $216. I can, said, I can live on this for, for a couple of weeks. Of course, I was on unemployment, so <laughs> I'd like to thank the taxpayers of the United States of America for making it possible. We don't mind. After three years, Tom left the theater to make his big screen debut in the low-budget slasher film, He Knows You're Alone. Then, in 1980, this cross-dressing sitcom made him a star on network TV. <laughs> It's been said of you that you actually have great uh, 
comedy timing. Is this true? Yes. Are you actually tall? No, but standing next to you, it, it, it appears to be the case. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's an optical illusion. I see. <clears throat> Though it only lasted two seasons, Bosom Buddies led to a guest appearance on Happy Days in 1982. That's where Tom met the man who would cast him in the surprise hit Splash, future Oscar winner Ron Howard. I mean, this was a movie about a mermaid being made by Disney that was directed by Opie Cunningham. I mean, in and, and, and all, and all seriousness, people were not all that thrilled. And instead it comes out and it enters the national consciousness. Oh! You have any idea how I, I got here? Between 1984 and 1987, Tom was busier than ever, starring in seven more feature films with comedy kings like Jackie Gleason, John Candy, and Dan Aykroyd. I'm, I've known I've been a funny guy for a long time. The praise for Tom reached new heights in 1988 with Big. And can you believe the role almost went to this guy? Yep, Robert De Niro was in but dropped out due to a scheduling conflict. Honey? The film established Tom as a box office favorite and earned him his first Oscar nomination. It was a surprise and a real thrill. It was an honor. We were both on the couch in the morning there, kind of blubbering before we had to go to work. As the 80s came to a close, Tom's climb to the A-list continued, thanks in part to Meg Ryan. The two played love interests in three different films. The first, Joe vs. the Volcano. E.T. was behind the scenes. Roll, please. Coming, Mark. And action. Take me to the volcano! Joe. Meg Ryan, she raised the stakes of this thing. The very first day, like, she kicked my butt into this all kind of other gear, just you know, from one actor to another. The door to the universe is you. Me? Meg reportedly beat out Julia Roberts, who auditioned for the role just one week before she got a callback for Pretty Woman. The cult classic opened to mixed reviews, but Tom and Meg would team up a second time in Sleepless in Seattle, about a widowed man who finds love through the radio. Who hasn't seen somebody and kind of gone, boing, at the, at the very sight? There's no such thing as a perfect I like the whole idea of the parallel lives and, you know, these people are meant for each other, but will they get together, won't they get together? And I think that that's sort of a universal feeling of hope that people have. There is that person that is out there that is destined for you, and you probably crossed paths at some point in your lives. But not each other. They were both married, Meg to Dennis Quaid and Tom to Rita Wilson during their lucrative run. Sleepless in Seattle and You've Got Mail are still among the highest earning rom-coms of all time, ranking in a collective box office haul over a half billion dollars. Welcome. Welcome. Meg and I are not real close yeah. pals. We see each other every now and again. It's like, uh, uh, we don't hang out for coffee. We're not like Lucy and Ethel, you know, who are always, <laughs> hey kid, what are you doing? When we pick up, we just pick up right where we left off, and it is an effortless kind of thing. While Tom's proven he can do rom-coms, he is also a master of on-screen transformations. Ball players! I haven't got ball players, I've got girls! You need to be sort of allowed in this. Allowed, an oaf, a boor, a dissipated, drunken sot. I usually have to come in and be, you know, unleash this kind of charm monster that I carry <laughs> along in my in a cage wherever I go. And, and be likable and witty. Instead, I got to be everything that they never ever let me do. <laughs> E.T. was on the A League of Their Own set with Tom in Evansville, Indiana back in 1991. He packed on about 30 pounds to play boozy baseball manager Jimmy Dugan. I ate a lot of uh, barbecued pork uh, <laughs> ribs and we made our trips to the Dairy Queen. What was the toughest thing about this, this job for you? Uh, taking the weight off when it was all over, that was, that was hard. Man. I got fat, I got fat. But Tom managed to shed the weight, plus 26 extra pounds for his dramatic turn in 1993's Philadelphia. Now you're a good lawyer, Andrew. I'm an excellent lawyer. They put me on a very, very specific diet regimen and exercise program for four or five months. Um, every day was, they've brought me my food. And if I hadn't been, say, quite so heavy from, still from the League of Their Own era, 
I might, might not have had to work so hard, but uh, that, that's, that's what duty called for. I had no hair that shaved my head for the wigs and all the different looks that we'd had to have. His transformation into Andrew Beckett, a gay lawyer diagnosed with AIDS, was more than skin deep. And the Oscar goes to... Tom Hanks in Philadelphia. I know that, that I'm standing there honestly because so many gay men have died of AIDS since 1976. All we're doing is throwing light on the injustices that are going on right now. Good God, we need more of that in the movies. One year later, Tom became the second actor in history to win back to back, picking up the lead actor Oscar for Forrest Gump. That's all I have to say about that. Houston, we have a problem. Tom's also taken on many real life roles, channeling Jim Lovell in Apollo 13, Captain Sully Sullenberger, even Mr. Rogers. Well, you be my neighbor. But one of the most extreme roles was Castaway. He had to cut weight again, more than 50 pounds, and the pressure was intense. It's tough to do drive through <laughs> with the kids, though, you know, because the, the car is filled with, you know, smell of cheeseburgers and French fries. That's right. And no and Krispy Kreme. It's an easy thing to get through. <laughs> Howdy. My name is Woody, and this is Andy's room. That's all I wanted to say. You got a friend. I've heard all these actors say, oh, it's fun, it's great, because you, you just get to play and da da da. It's the hardest work I've ever done as an actor. It's horrible. If you think acting in, you know, as you're driving home from space is <laughs> tough to do, try to sit there and pretend to be a talking puppet for six hours. This is Andy we're talking about. Woody is so volatile, he yells a lot. You glow in the dark! My right. vocal cords would be in shreds after a while. I made movies where I carried guys through the jungle, you know, <laughs> for weeks at a time, and I've never been as tired as I am right now. Hey, what did I tell you earlier? No one is getting replaced. If I was gonna be put in a real life version of this movie, I'd be Woody, there's no question about it. 27 animators and 61 other filmmakers agonized over the tale of Lost Toys for four years before it was finally released in theaters. It kicked off a $3 billion plus franchise that sold more than 9 billion more in merch. It is a profoundly moving and special experience. Every time I've just slapped my head and said, I can't believe I'm a part of this. The Toy Story saga will continue with a fifth installment in development now, but of course, Woody and the rest of the gang will always have a home at the happiest place on earth. We were at Disneyland, and there was Buzz and Woody as well. And my daughter, who was in her 30s, burst into tears because oh. she realized that some version of her dad is going to be at Disneyland for the rest of eternity. That's a powerful thing. And that's why I think this will be his greatest legacy. There will always be children watching those movies. You know, like Woody and Buzz, Tom's got a forever friend in wife, Rita Wilson. We married the right people. <laughs> That's right. I knew something was cooking there uh, right from the, from, from the very beginning. So, uh, <clears throat> Cindy, what, uh, what else do you do? Oh, well, like Henry said in his tape, the, the usual, usual stuff. <laughs> Tom and Rita first met in 1981 on the set of Tom's sitcom, Bosom Buddies. But it turns out, Tom had his eyes on her long before that. I did an episode of The Brady Bunch. Tell me one. Two, tell me who are you, the Bears. Three, Three four, four, tell me who's, who's gonna, gonna score, the Bears. I was, I was watching on a Friday night where this cheerleader was so cute she knocked me out, and then I married her. E.T. sat down with Tom just days before he and Rita tied the knot in 1988. Probably be the same kind of husband as I was a boyfriend, and I thought I was a pretty good boyfriend, so I guess I'd make a pretty good husband. Tom and Rita have gone on to partner as producers, too, bringing eight projects to audiences. Their biggest surprise hit? My Big Fat Greek Wedding. As the daughter of Greek immigrants, Rita couldn't resist. When are you and time going to get married? You have two more weeks and then get rid of him. <laughs> I'm even better than a, a Greek boy, because I'm a non-Greek who had the good sense to marry a Greek. I think what Tom's living out is that he actually picked up a table in his mouth and danced around with it. Actually, it was a and chair. I did pick up a chair with my teeth. It was a table. Was it a table? Yes, it was. That's how much fun we were having. It was a table. I can't Opa! Opa! The couple has supported each other through sickness and in health. In 2015, Rita was diagnosed with breast cancer and underwent a double mastectomy. I would say that we got closer, if it's even possible to say that. Today, she's cancer-free, and in April, Tom and Rita celebrated their 35th wedding anniversary.
I'm totally the luckiest woman in the world. I... And everybody should be so lucky with their lover. Today, the Hanks are a family of six. All four of Tom's kids are Nepo babies, including Elizabeth and Colin from his first marriage. From an early age, they were dad's shadows on set. Would you ever want your kids to be actors? If they want to go off and, and, and try to be better than their old man, that'd be fine. <laughs> Elizabeth, who's now a 41-year-old writer, was the first to foray into the family business, making a cameo in 1994's Forrest Gump. Otto, it was your father's name. You remember. Youngest son, Truman, made his film debut in the 2022 tearjerker, A Man Called Otto, playing a younger version of his dad. The director wanted Truman in the movie. It was really like adamant that he wanted somebody that looked like Tom. Right. And so he saw a picture of him and it was like, that guy. <laughs> we do resemble each other a lot. So you, Tom Hanks is your dad? It, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. OK, I want some answers. 46-year-old Colin got his first major role in the sci-fi series Roswell in 1999. Now he's an Emmy-nominated actor with over five dozen credits to his name. I was a PA on Apollo 13, and that was my first credit. When it came time to, for me to actually decide what I was going to do in college, I said, okay, well, you know, did a lot of theater in high school and stuff like that, so I th think I'll give that a shot. It worked out, thank goodness. Chet might be the most controversial of the Hanks clan, but after struggles with addiction, he's more than a year sober. For me, it took, like, something drastic happening, like becoming a father, for me to make the change. Your parents, how have they supported you through your sobriety? By doing just that, just, just by being supportive. Is there a dream project you would like to have in which the entire family could collaborate? No, because I don't want it to be work. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to take a, I'd like to take a camping trip across the country that all together. Right. I've got to go into the control room and wish everybody good luck. Have a good show. So Tom Hanks poked fun at his nice guy image when he hosted Saturday Night Live back in 1988. Yes, Tom, officially a member of the show's 10 Timers Club. Crazy. We leave you with our favorite Tom SNL moments. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Hanks. Boy, you, you people must be getting real sick of me by now. As you know, I started the Five Timers Club. One of the most exclusive clubs in the world. I'm nowhere near I'm near Alec Baldwin or Steve Martin. Excellent corner for scoping out the bay. You said a mouthful. <laughs> Not interested in me at all. You know, um, magazine cover recently called me America's Dad. <laughs> and I would have preferred Sexiest Man Alive, but I will take it. I'm going to find out what makes Michael Che tick. What's the deal with cobwebs? I want to know! <laughs> yeah, I've never even thought of that, man. That's so true. <laughs> well, let me see here. I got her. I got her. Good thing I was here. Folks, this is the captain. I'm sorry about that. Sully saved everything. Uh, just some accidental tripping. Yeah, Sully did it again.